Uh, Chair Bonga, we can be seated. Thank you. Uh, Dumela, once more, San Bonani, Jambo, Ma, Ma Africa. As we are greeting also our audience uh, on the uh, UNISA YouTube channel, uh, you are welcome on the second annual memorial lecture of Dr. Zenzile Mirem Makeba. Um, happening during the Africa month, we are beginning the Africa month at that note at the University of South Africa. My name is uh, Advocate C. Paul Mantula, attached to the Tabumbeki African School. Uh, what you see on the program, uh, my colleague also David Lezualo is here at the front, who will be working together closely. Uh, Prof. Edith Paswan, who was our moderator last year on our first lecture, is not present. Uh, I will also request us if we can put our phones on silence. Uh, and you are all aware about our bathrooms, it's only when you go out, just on your immediate left. Uh, I will also request us when our keynote speaker speaks and our guests, we avoid uh, making the traffic or the up and downs. Um, as also we have our cultural group from Makapan, who will also be entertaining and educating us this afternoon. Uh, it's a beautiful Sunday, and like I said, uh, we will also begin with the opening and welcome. Uh, the VC and the principal is not present also, uh, so Prof Nkomo will do both welcoming, uh, as well as the opening remarks. That will follow by the family of Dr. Miram Zenzile Makeba, as well as the messages of support that will come from the music industry, Kapaso, as well as from Miriam Makeba Foundation. That will come in the first session, and our other uh, second phase will go in terms of the diplomatic community from Gini Konakri. Uh, Me Santo Dabo will also give us a message of support uh, coming from the embassy. The recognition message of what we did last year also, it will come from contemporaries of Me Miriam Makeba, Me uh, Abigail Kubeka, Me Maralo, Me Tinam Shope. Tribute Beyond Memory, we are going to take you on the theater of the mind also through radio. Uh, one of our elders who have been on Tabela FM, one of our African language stations, Re Tamahani Maxwell Mujapilo, who will also take us through what we call music beyond memory. Uh, David Lezuala will give us exposition and the introducing the lecture or the lecturer uh, that will be Mama uh, Princess, uh, Princess of Africa, Me Yvonne Chagachaka. She said we must not call him uh, the doctor today. She's a princess of Africa. Uh, the closing remarks by my fellow uh, Professor David Mello will also be providing with the closing remarks. Uh, so I'm just taking you through this program. Meta Tomokotu from Mirem Makeba Center for Girls will do us a vote of thanks. It's going to be a marathon of a celebration of 92 years celebrating the life and the legacy of Mirem Makeba the cultural ambassador, cultural uh, activist, the freedom fighter, the peacemaker, a mother, the grandmother, uh, a humanitarian activist. So we are not celebrating an ordinary person uh, this afternoon. It's our second annual memorial lecture. Last year, Prof. Nkomo, you'll recall, we had the minister in the presidency, Melamine Zuma, who gave the first lecture. On that note, I will call upon Professor Sibusisio Vilunkomo, the Executive Dean of the Tabumbeki African School of Public and International Affairs, to give us a welcoming remarks. Siabo. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Chairperson of this important occasion. I want to thank you for doing all the salutations and the recognitions. I don't have to repeat what you have already done in the interest of time. My duty today is to welcome everyone, but before I do that, I'd like to extend Professor Puleng Linkabula's 
apologies. She's busy with graduations and other activities of the University of South Africa. She would have loved to be here. She appreciates the celebration or the delivery of this memorial lecture. I want to share with you who Professor Linkabola is so that, particularly for the younger people, when you leave this room, you must have inspiration and you want to achieve as she has. On January 2021, Professor Puleng Linkabola assumed office as the new principal and vice chancellor of the University of South Africa. The November decision by the UNISA Council to appoint Professor Linkabola at the helm of UNISA was historic in the sense that she became the first woman, the first black woman, and the only third black person to be appointed as head of the University of South Africa, Africa's largest university in its more than 147 years of existence. So that's quite an accomplishment. She holds a doctorate in ethics, theology, and philosophy. Her specialization is in the multidisciplinary discipline area, social ethics entailing the economy, ecology, politics from the University of South Africa. Her master's degree she obtained from St. Andrews University in Canada, in Saskatchewan. And she obtained it with a first class. First class, no doubt. She obtained a bachelor's degree from the National University of Lesotho and she continues to distinguish herself. Her approach, her understanding what a university ought to be, is what I'm going to articulate. Academic excellence, competitiveness, being a national asset, being a continental university, and be a global institution of substance. She is responsible for the creation of the 10 catalytic niche areas, which are very significant for any country to advance or develop. I want to paraphrase all of this by saying, particularly to young people, if you think that politics is the liberator, think twice. Education is the ultimate liberator. If you don't have a good education, you can't compete. You can't compete. So yeah, with these few words, I want to share, I wanted to share the accomplishments of this woman vice chancellor principal who is very important for this university. I stand here to welcome you on behalf not only of the Tabombeki African School of Public and International Affairs, but on behalf of the University of South Africa, which Professor Lenkabola is leading. The University of South Africa turned 150 years last year, and it continues to celebrate its existence. 
This institution has produced some of the most dynamic, outstanding leaders of this country. Some of them obtained their qualifications from outside the country when they were in exile, and some of them obtained their qualifications whilst they were on Robben Island. And many others from other parts of the world studied with this historic university. So the list of who's who of this institution, the list of the alumni, alumnus of this university is amazing. So this university must be celebrated at all times, and I hold the view that this university must be protected as a major asset. It's a key point for this country and the, and the continent. So it must be protected from being destroyed. Yes, I've spoken about the Invest of South Africa. Welcoming you from the side of the Tabombeki School, or what is called the Tabombeki African School of Public and International Affairs, the TM School in abbreviation. We also focus on the notion of quality education as a school, the relevance of education to our continent, and the importance of us as a school being globally competitive. We cannot stop there. We also say the Tabon Becky School must follow the direction the investor of South Africa is pursuing to be a center of excellence in the pursuance of new knowledge, inventions, and the creation of knowledge we can, which can liberate people from this continent and people from the world. Our areas of specialization as the TM School just to give you a sense, are the following. Public leadership studies, peace and development of peace and conflict studies, citizenship studies, government studies, urbanization and regional affairs. I just want to stop a little bit there. As South Africa is urbanizing rapidly, the challenges of urbanization are becoming more and more severe. It is estimated that by 2030, 78% of the South African population will be in the urban areas. And urbanization comes with all sorts of challenges. And if you don't study urbanization, you'll be shocked as to what you will be confronted with. We also specialize in livelihoods and resource management. We are endowed with human capital. We are endowed with mineral resources and other resources. How do we manage those resources to the advantage of the country and the continent and the world? International diplomacy science is another area of study. We've got to play the world. If our playing field is not the world, we don't know where we're going. We have been integrated into the world system. Security and intelligence, a country which has a weak intelligence, is a country which is going nowhere because intelligence is very important. It's not about spying. It's not about espionage. It's about the development of a country. Simulations and futuristic studies, very important. You must be able to predict or project the future. So we welcome you to this occasion because this university is committed to promoting internationalists like the late Miriam Makiba, 
They used to say, they used to call her Miriam Makiba. But she's Miriam Makiba. We recognized, we recognized her cultural role in the liberation of this country. We are also excited over the fact that she was extremely important in educating, liberating, and spreading globally the message about a system called apartheid, which was eventually declared a crime against humanity. She was extremely instrumental. Furthermore, she was articulate. She touched many lives and souls throughout the world and the continent. And even as far as Latin America, Central America, Pata Pata, that music of hers was all over the world. And even in Eastern Europe, so I do welcome you and hope that today is going to be a very special day. And Chair, I'm sure you are going to make sure that we get the utmost out of today. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Prof. Uh, some of you will recall Mayor Miriam Makeba when she left. She asked uh, that question, E.P. Injela. If you listen to that song, E.P. Injela, <laughs> it was in 1960 uh, when, when she was leaving this country. Uh, when you think also of the 30 years, uh, I, I think that narrative of 1994, we should look back at 1990. Uh, her coming back in 1990 uh, in April, Actually, it was in June, not April, it was in June. It was only for a six-day visa, Prof. A very important uh, historical moment of her return home. Persuaded by the founding president, Nelson Holisasa Mandela, the late, to can come back home. Uh, within that space of four years, she was already active in the arts and creative space. She was on Sarafina. She did a lot within that space of four years before 1994. And I think it is important for us to look back. Uh, as I will ask the family member, Ayanda, uh, to come to the podium. Uh, ask also uh, the rep of Capasso, because Mr. Leslie is not here, CDB Jotam, to come forward, and Maurice Roda to come to the table. Uh, the ambassador, I mean, the, the councillor, the first councillor in charge of economic affairs, uh, Ambassador of Gini Konakri to come forward also on the, on the stage here, so that we start with our program. Uh, I don't know if our cultural group is it ready to render us one item as we are welcoming our, our first speakers of this commemoration and the celebration of a life. It's a 92 years, by the way, so don't think of uh, 16 years of the passing of Mazi. We are talking about birth. That's the ritual of birth, earth coming to life. And it is important for us when we do that uh, reflection. Our cultural group, are you ready to render one item? You can render so long as we are still even preparing.
very important that in our culture the beating of a drum is what signifies the African culture. Uh, the rhythm of dancing, very important that uh, even in the last days of Mazi when she was going to vote DRC, she would meet such cultural group dancers. When she goes to Suriname, all those countries that she was visiting, there was always cultural groups that will welcome her in the airports, in the state buildings. So it is important for us to still be cultured and still stick to the rhythm of Africa. As I call the family member Ayanda Wakamakeba Lee to come and give a word from the family. Uh, Ayanda, you can come forward. Greetings to everyone, respectfully. Um, my name is Nicole Ayanda Makeba Lee, the great granddaughter of Mir Makeba. On behalf of Dr. Mir Makeba's family, we would like to humbly thank everyone in all the organizations who continue to keep her legacy alive. It's such an honor to be standing here today doing this for my great grandmother. I know that wherever she is, she's smiling. May your beautiful soul continue to rest in peace, Gogo. Thank you so much. Uh, I thought Ayanda would go deeper and deeper. You know, she was short and sweet to the point. Because uh, you know, celebrating ooh, Gogo, you have to be free, Ayanda. You know, uh, sometimes even move away from the lingua franca, you know. Uh, because uh, I think that's what Mazi did, going to Europe or anywhere she was going, she didn't leave her language back. She was always moving with the language, moving with that passion, with that commitment. Uh, let me call the Miriam Makeba, uh, no, no, it's a Capasso before foundation. I wanted to bring the foundation just after the family. I don't know if I can do that, Pramoris. Uh, let me bring Capasso the industry. Last year, I think we had Sampra. Uh, also to look at the issues of intellectual property rights. I think when we've been doing this intergenerational, the Memorial Lecture of Mazi, we've been trying to search and look at these issues of IP rights. Uh, what happened to most of their music uh, copies and rights in Europe, in USA? I think there's been a long-standing debate in this country. Uh, with the Copyright Amendment Bill being in Parliament, uh, but also cultural exchange programs for our young artists. How do we even retain the legacy of Miriam Makeba in this country? Uh, through music, uh, through her work. So we always want the music industry, when they come to this podium, also commit how will they want to partner with the Tabumbeke School, how will they want to partner with the Miriam Makeba Foundation and Center for Girls. Uh, Bujotama Matariro, you can come forward, Bujotama. Thank you. Uh, greetings, everyone, and thank you very much uh, for this opportunity. Uh, my name is Jota Matariro. I am the Chief Executive Office of Capasso. Um, <clears throat> Capasso is um, a company that was formed in South Africa to represent the rights of musicians in terms of uh, when the music is reproduced in order to be played either on any other platform, then we can be able to collect and all that. But uh, typical of... Um, Mama Miriam Makeba, Mama Africa. Kapasso now does not only represent musicians in South Africa, we actually represent musicians across the continent and our strategy is to make sure that every African who has produced, performed music is compensated for that music because this will keep our legacy alive. Uh, music has got to be paid for in order to encourage more and more creation and performance because without that music uh, being compensated, um, we won't be able to have more people producing music just like another art. And what we have always been fighting for is to say, if uh, somebody can actually get arrested for infringing a BMW logo, the same should apply for anybody who infringes music. And that is what we are fighting for because that intellectual property is exactly the same. It's just a different format, 
but that logo for Mercedes Benz and Pata Pata as a song, it, they actually represent exactly the same thing. So we would like to make sure that it gets compensated for. Um, the first time I attended a function that was remembering Mama Africa uh, was in 2018 in Algeria. We don't only do it here. It's done across the continent because that is who she represented. She represented the continent. She took African music to the continent and then later on took African music to the rest of the world. So I attended another one in Burkina Faso uh, last year where they were also celebrating Mama Miriam Makeba. And I know in Guinea, they also do that because we have colleagues that we work with in all those parts of the world. So typical of Mama Miriam, uh, Mama <coughs> Africa, Kapaso has seen that there is no divide. The colonial divide that was put on us, where we are referred to as French-speaking Africa, English-speaking Africa, Portuguese-speaking Africa. We don't see that as Kapaso because Mama Miriam Makeba went and stayed in Guinea because she didn't see that, just like us. We don't see that, and this is why we have bilaterals with Guinea, the CMO from Guinea. We have bilaterals in Algeria, Morocco, Tanzania in the east, as far as Seychelles in the Indian Ocean, because what we believe is that everybody who has done their music, and particularly African music, because that is what we represent, uh, is compensated for. And going international, uh, that you were mentioning, we also work with quite a lot of agents where we represent our African music, and we make sure that wherever the music is exploited, it gets paid, and then it comes home. So um, we, we have got a never give up attitude, just like Mama Africa, where she never gave up. Where it was very difficult, she, get, she got more motivated to do more. And that is what we did. In 2016, um, when streaming was introduced in Africa, it had been there. Um, in the other parts of the world. But in 2016, we started to see streaming coming to Africa. At that time, there was nobody on the African continent who was collecting music that is streamed on Spotify, on Apple, on YouTube, and all these platforms. And as Capasso, we went and made a business case with our counterparts in Kigali, uh, where we meet as African CMOs under the umbrella of CISAC, for which the Princess of Africa is the vice chairperson. We discussed and we said uh, the proposal that we were given was that the music is the, the, the money is supposed to be collected and go to Europe and then we would be paid that money back. But our question was not everyone has got the data for the music that they have because we are being referred to as a developing world. You have got the technology already, we don't. So what, what happens to the music that you cannot find? And also, how do we know that you are paying us correctly because we can't see the reports from the digital sales reports and all that. So we made it a point as Capasso to say, in South Africa, in Johannesburg, we set up a digital licensing hub for the African music. And we have partnered with all CMOs from across the continent, from Cairo to Cape Town, from Dar es Salaam to Douala, to make sure that we collect all money that is where the African music is being exploited. So we continue to be uh, inspired by the spirit of Mama Miriam Makeba in everything that we do, because we believe that if we don't protect our own cultural heritage in Africa, nobody will, will. It won't be protected. So we make sure that we do protect it. Not only did she inspire uh, musicians, by the way, you find all the number of drawings that come up of Mama Africa. It is an inspiration. Somebody is drawing. They are not even looking at the music. There are people that are inspired, and then they make music inspired by Mama Africa. But there are people that make drawings, which drawings also need to be protected, by the way, of Mama Africa because of the work that she has done from across the continent. 
um, I would like to really appreciate being given this opportunity. And thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Brother Chotam, for sharing with us all those aspects uh, in terms of understanding where we are in this digital streaming era. Uh, looking at many cases that in this 30 years we knew what has been going on on the case of Miriam Makeba. Uh, I don't think we have to ignore it, just um, thinking one of his lecture halls here, Miriam Makeba, we had another session on the same question. Uh, scholarship is very important on IP rights, on looking at these issues from university students who are here those who are following us online, who are on YouTube channel, that these issues are very important. I know Dr. Halan is very critical when it comes to these issues of Spotify, YouTube, who's owning the rights, where does the dollar and the euro go, uh, all those foreign currencies, do they really benefit our artists? That's another key question. The Copyright Amendment Bill of the apartheid era of the 70s, 80s, how do we break it down to ordinary young artists? I think that's the challenge that all Capasso and all music industry are facing to interact with institutions of uh, higher learning to engage on these issues. Uh, but Maurice Iporoda, uh, I think uh, from the Miriam Makeba Foundation, if we can come forward to give a message of support from the Miriam Makeba Foundation. San Bonani, good afternoon. As Professor Ngomo was speaking, um, talking about UNISA, giving us the background to this great university, which is 150 years, and of course with the TM School, it is only then that it dawns on me uh, how proud we are from the Miriam Akeba Foundation to have been surrounded and uh, by this great two institutions, Professor Gong. We are humbled and we are very much grateful. And uh, we haven't said it enough to thank you and thank you, Nisa, for what they actually did when Miriam Makeba was still alive. Um, this school, this university, gave, Dr. M gave Miriam Makeba a doctorate while she was still alive. And that is very, very important to us in the foundation because wherever she is, at least she knows that this country of her birth did love her. Yes, she was a South African, but not only she was a South African. As we all know, she believed in the continent. She believed in Africa. She believed in the world. That is why Miriam Makeba was never buried. About two years ago, there was a mother of one of the president of Kenya who actually wanted to visit this country to come and pay homage to the grave of Miriam Akeba. Sadly, she did not know that she was never buried. And I think it is in that context that as the foundation, we felt that it's very, very critical and important that this country must build a monument for Miriam Makeba so that when the world thinks of her, as they celebrate her, as they want to come to this country, because she's one of our great exports, we must never take that for granted. So uh, we want to make work hard to try to make sure that in the next five years that that monument is being realized and the people of this country will decide where it should be. We will follow the lead from South Africans. And number two, Prof, and I'm, I'm saying this to the university, TM School and UNISA. We are very excited about this. When we came with the concept of the memorial lecture, TM School, David and Sipo, who for quite a number of years, they were celebrating Miriam Makeba's birthdays. And when we felt that, we all knew at that particular time that Miriam Makeba was bigger than that. So it was proper that this country should celebrate an artist and give an honor so that there is an artist here who has a memorial lecture. And they did not think twice. 
So I want to thank this colleague right now to say thanks, Sipo, thanks, David, for the efforts that you guys put for all those four years before we started having this memorial lecture, which started last year. I'm talking about this memorial lecture that is very, very important because it's, it's, it educates us, it educates the youth, it educates South Africans that we must not really believe this glitch that South Africa started in 1994. No, no, it started way back. Those were the days and the times of the Mire Makeba of the world, where Mire Makeba 60 years ago this year was the first African professor, as you are speaking about the first. Mire Makeba was the first African and the first female to address United Nations. This is very good for the history of this country as we celebrate our 30 years of democracy. But the Mira Makeba had one love. When she came into this country, she started what we call Makeba Center for Girls. We do have the chairperson of Makeba Center for Girls here today. But for me, it was very, very critical that we must always remember that her love was a girl child. She started a Makeba Center for Girls, and the sad part about it is, for the past six years or so, it hasn't been functioning, mm -hmm. Professor Ngomu. And it cannot be. I want to appeal to the university, both TM School and UNISA. The school is at Midrand, Prof. It's very critical for us to roll our sleeves and make sure that Miriam Makeba's legacy is not buried with her. Uh, that would be my appeal to this great university. Yes, we are doing all our best in terms of talking to government, making sure that social development does its part in terms of making sure that it's going to assist all those girls in Midrand, because most of them, they come from these squatter camps, you know, and we know all the challenges in those areas. So I think with those few words, I want to say thank you. Thank you, Chairperson, and thanks, everyone. Uh, thank you, uh, Put Morris, uh, for those words and reminding us of the commitments uh, and reminding us of the journey of Memirem. Uh, as we are moving to the diplomatic messages, uh, but this message coming from the Embassy of Guinea, Conakry, in South Africa. We have three Guineas there's Guinea Bissau, there's Equatorial Guinea, this is Guinea Conakry. Um, and this is one of another heritage site where one of the um, one scholarly article was saying that Miriam Makeba has been documented when he was in the U.S. only, but nobody has documented the formative years in Guinea Conakry mm -hmm. between 1968 and 1986. So we have a wealth of knowledge uh, of her stay in Guinea Conakry. One of her child, Bungi, was buried there. The TM school last year had an Africa Day lecture uh, in Guinea Conakry last year where the former president Tawumbeki went to have an, a tribute as well to Miriam Makeba in Guinea Conakry. Uh, so you can look how this relates now if, if we, are, we are bringing the embassy of Guinea Conakry to come and give their account as well, to come and share uh, Mazi as she was well known and she was staying outside the capital city of Guinea Conakry. She was not staying in the, in the suburbs or she was staying in the village Uptown. She was not in the uptown, she was in the, in the rural countryside. Yeah. So I will invite Mayor Sontu Dabo uh, to come to the podium and give us a cultural diplomatic note, or what you will call the diplomatic note verbal, uh, in your language uh, of French, but we will need a cultural note verbal. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Bonjour, Sambonani, Hunjani, everyone. What an honor it is for me to stand in front of you here today, all the wonderful guests, uh, to deliver a quick message in honor of Mama Africa, Dr. Miriam Makeba. I would like to firstly um, thank 
the uh, Tabumbeki School of International Relations, UNISA, um, and as well the Tabumbeki Foundation for this opportunity. When I was approached uh, a few days ago to be present here today and deliver a quick message on behalf of the Embassy of Guinea, I thought what a wonderful opportunity because there's definitely a message that I would like to convey. If you think about it carefully, uh, as I'm standing here in front of you today, I am as well a product of Mama Africa. Dr. Makeba embodies the spirit of strength, resilience, faith, unity, but most importantly, hope um, and courage. Through her courage to fight the right fight, she inspired hope for many generations to come. And that is exactly my message for you today. Um, as I mentioned before, in May last year, exactly, the Tabumbeki Foundation, for the first time, held its Africa Day lecture in beyond the borders of South Africa in the Republic of Guinea, in Conakry. What was so revol revolutionary about this is the breaking borders uh, between us as an African continent, as an African population. As part of the delegation that uh, was present in Conakry, I watched President Becky deliver his last address um, in, uh, in a conference room exactly like this one at the Kofi Annan University. His message was very understood, but what was so amazing as I was sitting up front and watching the crowd was that though his message was in English, most of the student only spoke French. But the message that he was sending through was so understood because he was exactly talking about this African Renaissance and the fact that we need Africans' solutions by Africans for Africa. And every student that day understood his message clearly. And for me in particular, it was such a pivotal moment for myself because I saw hope. I saw hope in the eyes of students that did not even know about UNISA. But they listened carefully, they paid so much attention to the message and it was so clear that we need to break these barriers. We have so many barriers between us. You're talking about language, you're talking about culture. We have this made believe that we're so different but I can assure you that there's so much more that we have in common that, that we don't have in common. And that is exactly my message for you today. For all the young men and women here today, please, I need you to break the barriers. You're in Pretoria, there's so many embassies around. Present yourself, get your passport, travel, and welcome your brothers and sisters from around Africa. That is what Mama Africa did. She was in Guinea, she learned her language. And her music resonated with us up to today. And I am proudly standing here as a Guinean in South Africa and saying to you that we are all the same and only together we can build a, this Renaissance movement and move forward. So on that note, I thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Wanwali and Al Nike. Thank you. Thank you, Mama Siabonga. Asante sana. When she was speaking about traveling, Mimi Remakeva have nine diplomatic passports. Uh, so, and others were not legal. She had to skip the country, go to Mozambique, uh, Suriname, uh, Kenya, Tanzania. Uh, again, as Bramoris was saying, uh, we are also marking the 60 years of the speech before the UN. If you recall, last year we spoke about 1963 speech before the UN. 
It means that she's the only black woman who spoke to the UN twice in a year, consecutively. And as UNISA also were able to track the 60 years in both 2023 and 2024. Both those years are very important, those formative years. But also 1963, appearing before the Organization of African Unity, the meeting of 32 African states, she was able to perform. What we call African Union today, Mazi performed in Addis Ababa in 1963. So you, you can look at that linkage of diplomacy that was in Memira Makeba. 1999, she was given the ambassador's role at the UN to deal with food security issues in the Eastern DRC. So you can look at her role as an ambassador from culture to food to humanitarian. There was a lot. I think this end the session where we will bring you closer to Mazi, to the industry diplomacy. Now we are going to her contemporaries now. As I'll be asking my first guest here to go back to their chairs and welcome Me Abigail Kubeka, Me Maralo, Me Trina Shope. Abo Mama Pele, Abo. In Bogot. But in that midst of I will also bring Ubabo Tamahan Maxwell Mujapilene to come and join us also in the podium uh, so that we go through that uh, train, that journey. I hope all you have your return ticket in this journey. You don't have a single ticket, it's a return ticket, uh, and it's a journey that will last for these 92 years. So may I call upon Me Abigail Kubeka. Uh, to come to the to this chair, to, I mean to this podium here. <laughs> These chairs cannot sit alone just uh, with a tall raster like me here alone. Uh, I will request my elders to come here, uh, who also have their memories about Mazi. They'll be sharing with us, um, and they are also have been what I call the friends of UNISA and the friends of Tabumbeke School for, the, for, for many years when you do this lecture. Uh, we are always calling them forward and they are always willing to come. We should be thankful of Abu Mam, Abigail, Abu Mam Mar. Even if Bahamba Ngama sticks, they say they are, they are not having wipers actually. They are not going like this. They are straightforward. They are like Bekina Faso, you know. Okay. Uh, I will start with you, Me Abigail Kubeka. Can I come to the podium? I know last year we did it a cappella, a mazi. I know I read the text there, the text there, the text there, the text there, the the text there, 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 the text Thank you very much. Very good afternoon to you all. And thank you to the Begi School of, of, uh, of Africa and UNISA for putting this together. Although to me, it's like rubbing salt on, on a wound because of the things that didn't happen for Usizenzi, I used to call you Usizenzi. And, well, they sometimes say better late than never. Okay, they're happening now, but oh God, I wish they could have happened while she was alive. Mm. Because she was a very unhappy person when she got back home. Very unhappy. Nobody knew her. You know, there are so many politicians that are up there who, who, who don't even reach standards like Miriam. Mm -hmm. We haven't done Miriam what, what Miriam did. <laughs> and uh, well, Miriam, there's such a small street somewhere downtown named after her. Well, Miriam mm -hmm. did everything with her life, with her music. And nobody, you, you, you walk in Soweto and ask, not, not children only, even adults, do you know Miriam again? Oh yeah, Miriam, we pat a pat. That's all they know. 
Really? Is that all you know? Miriam singing pata pata. Last year, I said, in the, in, in, the, in the seminar upstairs, I said, God, thank you, Eunice, for doing this. Because it seems Africa knows Miriam better than South Africa. And they respect and love her better than we do. And that's a shame. It is a shame. But I hope the Tawambegi School of Africa and UNESA are going to push this agenda. That is why Miriam decided, please, don't bury me here. Throw my ashes in the sea so that I go back to the people that cared and loved me. What can we say about Miriam? All what we are saying about Miriam is what we hear from the people of Africa. Because when she was here, nobody cared about her. She had to go to Rome to go and perform. She was sick, but she didn't have a choice because she needed the money. She needed to, to work because nobody was hiring her. No, I, 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 I can't speak, I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, I think this is what we are always thinking when we do this uh, memorial lecture, to go through these issues that we don't uh, ignore them. We, uh, even in 2020, I think 2020, David, at the Miriam Makeba concert hall, we had the same session. We had another late uh, Babu Jonas Kwangwa. Uh, the same issues that uh, Umam Abigail is raising, uh, we don't think we'll always belabor them. We'll always have. Um, and it was difficult even for her to render a song like last year because of what she's saying about how much he was treated in the country. Uh, and I think that's why this memorial lecture, it is important to always go to the, to the truth and the issues that people don't want to hear particularly even at the inauguration of Nelson Mandela in 1994 also. If you have read uh, the International Solidarity by the late Becky Peterson, that uh, Mazi was, re was uh, not allowed to that inauguration, was told, who are you? Yeah. Uh, so there are many memories that if you have to think uh, of how Mazi was treated. I think some of us, the last time we saw it was in the SADC meeting. We will perform in the SADC meetings. And all president will go to her. And I think it was the then Tabombeki as a president uh, through Ambassador Willie Len Tlapo, uh, Zuma, they were able to pursue the cabinet and the president to appoint Memire Makeba as a cultural ambassador. Uh, at the moment, at Dirko, at Arts and Culture, we don't have cultural ambassador of Memire Makeba. And here are other cultural ambassadors in our midst. We don't have cultural ambassador of that stage. <laughs> May Abigail, we want to thank you once more uh, as she's oh, going to leave us. Uh, Umam Abigail, we are in Orlando West. Umam Mire moved to Orlando, moved to way to Mofolo, uh, Marabastad, uh, where Dr. Philip Tawan was also frequenting. So when we do this lecture in Swan, you know that the spirit of Mazi was also in Swan at some point. It was not only in Europe was also in Gauteng, uh, in all the two cities. Uh, Memoralo, uh, I know last time we heard you, we say 15 minutes. Oh, mama, why shy? You one hour. Eh? <laughs> why shy? You one hour. So I will ask her also to, to, to give us the bullets, you know, to give us the, the knowledge, the memories. Mm -hmm. And in Lapo, there was a stage. So here, Aguna stage, and then I will hambang. I'm, I'm happy that she won't take more than 40 minutes or 30. <laughs> because she's got a lot to say about Memire Makeba. And I think that will be important for it to be short and sweet, come on. Dumelang, Molueni, San Bonani, Abshin, Nimadegua. That's the one that always confused me because you know, I was I was born in Zimbabwe, so we took in one of gas. 
And I don't hide when I was born. I was born in 1952, so I'm turning 72 in July. Yay. They always say uh, ladies shouldn't tell their age, and I wonder why. Because I don't think I don't feel like 72. I don't look like 72. Murimo Hanagan, the one that confuses me, Kachivenda, and I thought one day I'll ask Yvonne to help me out because when I was when I was growing up, comes and shop, I would hear, you know, bone mebarics and vegetables talking to each other. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, my brothers and sisters, it is quite an honor and a privilege actually for me to be here today. And this is not the first time, like my favorite Sipo Mandula says, that I'm going to try not to speak for more than an hour. It's very difficult to speak very short about Mama Africa. Uh, the, in now, <clears throat> I started singing when I was 10 years old. And when I was a little girl, I used to make noise, gokasi. Uh, my sister, who passed on now, she introduced me to the music of Miriam Makewa when I was a little girl. But I used to do something which, you know, it can irritate neighbors. You know, Mzimshop, every four room, you know, four roomed houses, there's this little kitchen in, little window in the kitchen. So I'll stand on this chair and sing Miriam's song early in the morning on a Sunday. And now Sundays is when people are taking, like, you know, some time off from going to work. Babam, they're going to sleep a little bit late uh, and not wake up early to go and catch a train. And there's me standing on a chair. Exane Yvonne and going, Inanga Zama Kwengwe. So, and the neighbors will get, Shut up, it's too early. <laughs> but I didn't care, and I had not met Miriam. Uh, I grew up, I fell in love with her music. And as part of my repertoire, you know, when, I, when you put songs together to go and do your shows, your own songs, and you obviously will choose songs from other well-known artists. My repertoire was com like half of my songs will be Miriam McKenna. So it was difficult for me to say, no, I'm not going to sing this one today. It was Miriam, it was Letambuli, those were my two favorites. But as I grew up, I wondered if one day I'll have an opportunity to meet this great lady, this great woman. And funny enough, when she was still in exile, I would be traveling to some country, I would be at the airport somewhere, and someone would see me and say, hey, Mara, you know, we just saw Miriam Makeva, she's boarding a flight to another country. And I'd say, good Lord, I can't rush and go and catch up and say hello, because I'm on the other side and I can't miss my flight either. So we were always meeting, not at the same, at the same place, but couldn't see each other at the same time. And I, I, I felt bad. I remember once I was in Zambia. I was performing in Zambia, the Intercontinental Hotel. I used to do uh, what they call cabaret. I'd be booked there for a month or two months. And I arrived one day, and I had a lunch with some friends who were in exile at that time. And they says, ah, oh, Mara, ah, oh, Mfana, ah, oh, shame, too late. Miriam Akeva was here, she just left the country this morning, and I says, ah, oh, so I'm sure there's something that is blocking us from meeting. And when it was time, I remember getting a phone call in the early 90s. I got a phone call from Osquina Zendara, who used to run Doke House. She called me and, uh, and myself and Abigail and all the, the ladies in, in the industry. She called us to Doke House to announce something which like took us by surprise, but made us so excited. She called to, to tell us that Miriam Makeba was flying into the country in the next two weeks. And I was like, yippee, I'm going to meet this lady. And the worst part was 
when the, the rest of the ladies were there decided, because they know what me papa, and I know how to organize things. I don't know where I get the gift from. But they asked me to be the one that must prepare the welcome, the welcome entourage to, to go to, uh, it was still John Foster. Was it the airport? It was not yet. Jan Smart. Oh, it was Jan Smart. Yes. John Foster. John, Fos John Foster is a J. Yeah, a throne wheel. Yeah, it was Jan Smart. It sounds the same. Jan Smart, John Foster. There is Alan Pure, Pure, Pure. Ah, yo, I suga. Anyway, so. I got myself, they were, I was asked, now I, you know when these ladies, they, they dictate to you, they tell you, they don't ask you. I was this queen, I was this Tandy Klassen, Dolly Ratebe, Dorothy Masuku, Sophie Mplina, the Abigail, and they're not asking me in a nice way, Mara, would you please kindly do, they say, hey, Wena, because all these ladies I've just mentioned, they were slightly older than me. So to me, they were my big sisters. Whatever they say, I have to obey. So I had to prepare. They said, first, you must go and get a big bouquet of flowers to meet Miriam Makeva at the airport, to present her with the flowers at the airport. That's number one. Number two, you must organize a get-together reception at the, at the airport where the, you know, the media and blah, blah, blah. So we managed to do all that. But the, something happened that day when we were all waiting, you know, behind that glass door for Miriam to walk through, coming from exile after 30 years outside the country, fighting for the struggle and liberation of you and I. When those doors, when those glass doors opened and I'm standing there, and now number two, I'm, tr I'm dressed because I'm also trying to look like her. So I'm dressed in a turban and an African captain and everything, so that you know she doesn't feel lost. There was no way I'm gonna appear there dressed dressed like like Donna Sama or something like that <laughs> in a in a long Hong Kong wig or something. No, no. So I stood there with my big bouquet of flowers. And when those doors opened, there came Mama Mama Africa. As she walked out, hey, Mama Nya Papa, there was I in the front, hey. And she looked at me. Now I wondered where does she know me from? She went, Maram Danami. Oh my gosh, Yvonne, my blood, my, I just felt like yo. Wow, how does she know me? I mean, who, who am I? I've never met her, but she knew about me. I presented her with the flowers. She hugged me. She loved to hug. She just hugged me and we walked. So we're trying to find where I forgot where they said we should go to for the reception with the media. I completely forgot. Mina I was ready to take her to the car so we can go to a car. See? You know, I'm ready for us to go to a car. She comes in shop. Because I found out that we were actually going to Mzimshope, which is my township where I was born. And my home is in, is in uh, uh, High Street. And Mazi's home, where his brother was, is the street be be below our street, facing the railway line. But I, I was told Siem Zimshop, and I'm thinking, oh, Siem Zimshop, okay, we're going to my home, Siagiti. But no, Miriam's brother, lives the street below your street. For me, that was wow. All these years, I didn't know Miriam's brother was living right here, you know, which was completely unusual. But anyway, as the cars were driving into Mzimshope and going past my home, and I'm saying, this is my home, this corner house. <laughs> and when I get in, you say, you know, anyway. I'm going to try very hard to, 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 to be as short as possible. But it's very difficult to speak short about Miriam Makeba. Then I had an opportunity uh, to go and meet her. But before I start telling you, uh, talking about Miriam, first I really would like to thank the Tavon Beggy School for honoring Miriam Makeba. I'd like to thank uh, all the people who organized this. David Ntwanayak, you know, I think some people saw a video of me calling the president Ntwanayak. 
to take this opportunity to thank Tabombeki School for honoring Miriam. And I think this is the second time, is it, that we're doing this? Yes. It is quite an honor for me and a privilege to, to stand here and talk about Mazi. Now, Miriam Makeba was the most humble superstar that you can ever imagine. She was the most humble. She never once behaved like I'm a superstar. This mic is restricting me. Can, 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 is there one that I can? can no man put me. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end up chewing it. <laughs> you know, I'm a singer. We are so used to holding a mic and be able to walk around. But it, that's the, there we go. Yeah? Is it, has this one got any sound? Yes, I do. Is it sharp? Okay. That's better. You, there, icon. <laughs> Yo, kids. You know, in, in 1990, you all know when, when Tata Nelson Mandela <coughs> asked Miriam to come back. So she, she had to meet a whole lot of people when she arrived back. And I was one of those people that were always, when she's throwing a party or something, you know, she'd say, she had a special way of addressing me. She'd say, him done up. You know, she always had this little gruff voice. Him done up, him Mara. Ozala, I've got people coming to visit. So we, we enjoyed a lot of parties. You know, we, we hosted quite a lot of people. They'd sometime come to my house, and fortunately I wasn't living far from, from Mazi. My house was in four ways, four way gardens. And for me, just getting a phone call from Miriam McGeva was completely, you know, it was like, because I, I, I treated her as, some, something larger than life, or something like that. And, and she would, now I remember, uh, there's so many things that I remember about Mazi, but there was one particular one. Uh, we were invited to the French embassy. We went to the French embassy for whatever party that was gonna be held there. And now she knew that at the time, I used to wear these turbans, and I would tie these turbans they look like a, you know, a whole artwork, like a big work of art. These things would be like, you know, like the, 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 the chair, I'm sure you remember Yvonne, you were young. She's younger than me, by the way. She probably might not remember. But I used to wear these big turbans. And Miriam, Mazi, we used to call her Mazi. One day she called me before, now what, another thing that was strange, she liked to travel with me in my car. Now she had a, an embassy car, an ambassadorial car, which was a bodyguard. But she would say, him dana, nzo hamba na lo bodyguard na le moto yabo. They'll he'll follow us, he'll bodyguard us while you are driving when. And that's how we used to travel. She wants to be in my car, not in the bodyguard car where she's the ambassador of Miriam. No. And my car, you know, was a sports car. Uh, an SLK, blah, 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 you know, one of those things. The Vurta, you know, Vurta. Yeah. Even at us, you know, young people at us, they call me Coco Vurta. <laughs> they call me now Coco Vurta. Now, so I have to go and pick her up, and she'll get into my car. Now, I told her a story that this story was quite incredible. I was, in a, I was driving one day on William Nickel, and in the taxi, there was these people who saw me with the roof open. And they said, Woo! You know, whatever. But someone said, Woo! Yes. <laughs> and I was like, No! No! But no, please, I don't see a lekeke. But no, we're not insulting you. This is not a bad word, see a lekeke. So, what do you mean? Now we stopped at William Nickel and Uranium, I'm about. They say Sigale Keke means SLK. <laughs> they call the SLK Sigale Keke. I made a mistake of relating the story to Miriam Makeba. So one day she's with me in my car. We're driving with the roof open, it's hot. And Miriam hated wearing hats. I'm sure everybody knows. 
It would be a surprise if someone says they've ever seen Miriam with a straw hat like hiding from the sun. So me, I'm wearing this, I'm wearing a piece, you know, a cap, like, I'm like, I was with I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I've got a little bit of toti in me, so I'm wearing my cap, and Miriam is in the car with the roof open, with no hat on, and it is hot. So I say, Ma, why don't you, I've got a hat, can I lend you a hat? She says, Hem am Pele Africa. I used to feel, you know, work in my field in the MRC Mini Wam when I'm plant, and I never used to wear a hat. I says, also, the, the, the sun, say, you fry she lilang, I was anyway. So we're driving at William Nickel. There's taxi people who see us, me and Miriam, in the car. The roof is open, you know. So we are in the car, and these people in the taxi, they just saw Miriam, and they went, Ah, Mama Africa, Mama, Mama Maralo. They were so excited to see the two of us sitting in this two, you know, in this, in this car. So they go, Ninja, Nima, how are you? And Mazi answers. She says, Sisiga le keke. I was like, Yere, Maui, do you, do you even know what that means? And she says, Yeah, Sisiga le keke. So the, I, I had some of the most wonderful times with Mama Makeba. There were some hilarious times. Many times, actually. I don't know how many people can attest to how much fun she used to enjoy. So one day we were going to this embassy, the French embassy. So we were about to leave. She calls me. She says, Him, Janam, Imotiers is Oglanda, eh? So I'm telling you, Nam Sanjay, no, she says, La Lela, Janam, do you know Guti Bati Mina? Now, you all understand Zulu, right? Uh, she says, do you know Guti Bati Mina? Nawe, no Winnie Mandela, Bati Sibahe. Got woo! Me too, Naming Balala, I'm counted. She says, yes. She says, some Danam, Ntelu Utu Yego Twala La Mawashi. She says, I was not with Twala La Mawashi. She says, I must just comb my hair, you know, brush my hair. Because I'm beautiful. And you know what? That's when I stopped Tolala Mawashin, the big ones, you know. So I've, I've minimized my Mawashins. No more Mawashin. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish soon. Thank you very much. There, there, were, there were also sad, sad times, you know, that Mazi and I went through. You know, for me, it was the fact that Mazi did not receive the respect that I expected. I know Abigail spoke about it a few minutes ago. But for me, the sad thing was when Mazi would have to go outside the country so she can go and earn money so she can feed her family. That for me was sad. And, and another thing was how even the promoters, when they were promoting a show, they undermined Mazi. They would, they would sometimes book her for an event. But they'll have an artist who started even far later than me and pay this artist more than Miriam Makeba. For me, that I found. And Miriam never, ha he, never ever hid what she was going through. She'd say, hey, one day I walked into the house. And I'm not going to use the language that she used. But when I walked in to go and meet her, we were going to go out somewhere for whatever. As I walk up, you know, when you go to Mazi's house, you end up the ki the, from the kitchen side, you know, the, the back side of the house. In fact, it was a straight row, but you walked through the, the kitchen entrance. And as I was coming up the stairs, I could hear she's fighting with somebody on the phone. I don't know who she's fighting with, but, and she's fighting, is, is, she's in such a bad mood that she's using bad language. And I'm not going to repeat it here. She was really, really angry. And I walked in, I was like, what's going on, Ma? What's going on? And then the next thing, she hands me the phone. She says, how could you mean I like that? She gives me the phone. And I'm like, I don't know who she's talking to. You know, Maurice, I didn't know who she's talking to. So I'm, I'm saying, hello, Uban. And I, I says, hello. And this person repeats whatever this person had said earlier. And I'm like, puzzled. I don't know, because I didn't catch the whole conversation. And then she says, Him Dana, can you believe who this promoter wants to pay me and this? 
the same money. Me and I don't I'm not gonna mention the name. The same. Yes, says. And she says, RDZ. And she turned down the gig. Now, for me, can you believe how can anyone in their right mind treat Miriam Akeva like that? Even I, with all my travels and going everywhere, I sang for Queen Elizabeth in 1975 at the Palladium Theatre. But I still don't see myself as larger than Miriam Makeba. Never. For me, she was my inspiration. I would not expect anyone while she was alive to pay me the same as Miriam or even more just because Sega Kukile. And there's this thing of Kukile, someone is old. What, what, what's old? Or is You know, the funny thing, our voices don't get old. Miriam, Miriam Makeba's voice didn't get old, even when she was, her, her age had, you know, she was, but her, her voice was still wow. Ladies and gentlemen, I mean, I could stand here all day talking about Mazi, but I'm going to finish now, um, one second. I, I have to finish because, gosh, I wrote so many things. <laughs> uh, Miriam Makeba was not somebody that I still feel in this country we have not honored her. And I'm happy to hear what Abigail said, that if we can, put our heads together. But we need to, obviously, we need to find someone with a mula, you know, mudaiding, chin, mudi chin, to do this. And uh, uh, I don't know where we're gonna go, but I'm sure a miracle will happen one day, or we will just get together in the artist industry, you know, in the, in the sector. Get together, you know, Maurice, and invite artists from around the continent and raise the money to build a statue for Miriam. And I think it would be better if we, the artists, do this. If we, the artists, do this and not, and not wait for government to do this for us. I think it's about time we stop waiting for government to do A, B, C, D. The art sector, we should all come together perform, go around, go around the whole country, go around the continent. You know, maybe we can't all go at the same time, but those that can, let's just have something that we do for Mazi, so that wherever she's sleeping, because she's not sleeping, she's watching over us. She's watching us, that we can one day say, there, there's the big, huge statue of Mama Zenzile Miriam. I want to apologize to our people who are online on YouTube. It seems we have a technical glitches there, scratchy videos, visuals, the sound. Uh, it does not sound well for us, you know, when you have a lecture like this and a session. But I'm happy that this audience that is here is very active. And they are also excited about these memoirs, these memories that you are sharing, Memoralo. And we want to thank you once more uh, for sharing with us uh, all those memories. I know that there's a lot that you will have shared with us, uh, many moments uh, with you and Grasha Marshall and Memirem. Yeah. Uh, you know, there are many. Don't go uh, I don't want to go there, you know, but there are many of stories. That's another whole day. You know, uh, that is another whole day, you know. Uh, but let me just call Umam Tinam Shope as well to come to the podium so that we move. Where do they come from? Tell me, tell me, where do they come from? Tales so brave, tales so sad some are so funny so crazy unbelievable hi hi bo. they come from the bones of memories watch my eyes 
hear my voice. I tell you true, these tales are from the bones of memory. These tales are from the bones of memory. Of memory, of memory, of memory, of memory, of memory, of memory, from the bones 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 of memory. I don't know whose idea was it to invite me, but thank you. Thank you. Asante sana. Asante sana. Whoever decided to invite me, I loved Mama Miriam Makeba. And uh, Mama Miriam taught us so much without saying it to us. She led by example. That's why I love her so much. She led by example. And Mama Miriam, she was a pioneer, an icon, a pathfinder, a brilliant light that shone all over the world. Not only did she address the United Nations with that gentle voice, telling heavy truths. That woman, she also was the first daughter of Africa to win a Grammy Award. Yes. We're talking about the bones of memory. We're talking about the bones of memory. How much we have to remember about this amazing woman. People said when she was uh, singing in Sofia Town with the, with the Manhattan Brothers, Mm. Like it is a weakness to be gentle. Yeah. It's not a weakness to be gentle. Some of humans can be mad like the Namtrope, but it is not a weakness to be gentle. She was gentle. She was generous. She was loving. She was nourishing to all the people who came into contact with her. That's Mama Zenzile, Miriam Makeba. She was the daughter of a healer, Umawake. Why Pili Sabahantu? That daughter of a healer. When you saw her speaking gently, man, I go in New York, me and I was so scared. So performing, and the show is sold out. She spoke so gently. How can I? Kunja ni bitana seka ya. Kiti yozo tola kanja ni. Kose ingwe. I started praying for her. And then the lioness that broke loose on stage put her on stage. I don't know what to say that in English. Where are these educated people? You need the wind. <laughs> when she hits the stage, there were times when she sang like she was possessed. 
That's Mama Miriam. Oh my, my, my. What fire she put on every stage all over the world. And she said something that I love. I love beautiful quotations. And people have got magic and they give us gifts like these. She was very articulate, Mama Miriam. Mama Miriam, what? There are three things I was born with, and these three things I will die with them. One of them is called hope itemba. Another one is called courage. Yes, the third one is song. Go fang haingo. She was a healer through music. She passed important messages through music. She was able to unite nations through music. People who would not have known that they belong together, she embraced them through music. That's Mama Miriam for you. Another thing about Mama Miriam is how much she loved young people. And Ubongi, a beautiful daughter. I did not know that the song that she performed live with um, her daughter Bongi, in fact, it was Bongi's voice singing. I didn't know it was, it was not Mama Miriam singing. I assumed it was Mama Miriam singing. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a song for double bass voice like me. <laughs> now, when she sang, Ubongi, Kungeni sang on the stage. You understand? Kungeni sang on. I think anybody who has met me since we gained our freedom will hear me repeat this over and over and over. So you show again. I'm, I'm saying it again. Sorry, but I say it again. I'm a South African and I'm a copper. The copying and copying and copying and copying. But copper song is interesting on your mind. When I would perform in international festival, no, I say Wurzburg, no, I go, go on the Obusim Tango, go on the Mamere Makeba, or the Namka guaranteed to be the Kadabra baby. It's pretty big work as Dallas call easy food. Sabasa needs him Africa team. Until I put on my beadwork, I'm not well dressed. I'm not clean my pearls, Wako, sorry. <laughs> and that nonsense, oh, yeah, no, go to in, come alive, go to Mlilo Futayo. The number of black South African people who waste their money buying Mlilo Futayo, like Nima Zelap, what happened to this one? Louis Vuitton, my foot. <laughs> Support each other. Support each other. Hmm? Support each other. Mama Miriam Keba cared about supporting different artists from different parts of, of the continent. Then who can let Raming Il Tanda Jembe? What is the first country for the Jembe? Or how many countries? I was in West Africa, but what are the main countries? Like the Lakoni Jembe? Senegal, Senegal, Nepal. Okay. South Africans have decided, good see a Jembe riser. All South African drums, we put them in the, double, in the, in the deep freezer. When Zenjan? Sesaban. Sesaban. Why are we scared to beat our own drums? It's got a different sound. It's, it's Kubusa sending them Africa. Mamiram says, I took my culture everywhere I went. Everywhere. I went to the highest, um, uh, glorious venues. I brought Ubu Tosabami, Ubuntu Bami. I brought the songs of my people wherever I went. And then she sang in different languages. Mamire Makeba. Masikuruma, Mamire Makeba. I don't think I'll ever write a song about death. Ngoba, in Oringoma. Ngoba, um, Kai, why beggar got you? Why, why, cock? I do you can't compete with SK Kine? Huh? I took cock, I cook and all your go to a copper man, and look up at only twin, twenty nineteen. Huh? That is SK Kai, that one. Now, if you want to get another man who had words, who, who had fire on his pen, Ati, 
listen more often to things than to human beings. Those who have died have never left. Listen more often to things than to human beings. They are in the thickening shadows. They are in the rustling leaves. They are in the leaping flame. They are in the burning ember. They are in the child's first cry. They are in the woman's breast. Listen more often to things than to human beings. They are in the first flowers of spring. They are in the gurgling waters of the river on their way to the welcoming arms of the ocean. Listen more often to things than to human beings. Listen to the bones of memory. You shall hear Miriam Makeba's voice. Listen to the bones of memory. You shall hear her teachings, her love, her dedication, her teachings and believing and her patriotism. She was patriotic until the last breath. Let's be patriotic. Let's love this Africa continent of ours. We'll never belong to any other continent but this one. This is a land of beginnings. Mama Africa. This is the land of beginnings. The Empress of African Song. She was honored in different countries and she embraced all of them by honoring their languages. And I didn't know what this poem, listen more often to things than to human beings. Ibis Guti breaths the poem by Birago Diop, heavyweight of a writer. Now, Birago Diop, I didn't know what And then he wrote a song. And then, Umamire Makebo, I'm fundi singo, ma waikula. Ngo ma yase mali. Mire Makebo was singing with Birago Diop. Shisa! Ibo! Uba anloy! Our own Mama Miriam. That's Mama Mirema Geba. Mwana o mwana na tondiwa. Mwana o mwana. Mwana mwana mwana. Mwana o mwana na tondiwa. That's Mirema Geba. That's Mirema Geba. Languages. Let's embrace our own languages. Let's enjoy them and stop calling ourselves francophone, lusophone, or anglophone, whatever, and on, so on, so the colonizers want us to call ourselves. It's not my house, this one. Ati, I kept my culture. I kept the music of my roots through my music. I became this voice, an image of Africa and the people without even realizing it. She didn't strive to become Mama Africa. She lived what we saw in her. She wasn't pretending. She wasn't acting as if. And then Mama Miriam was humble and generous to everybody she came into contact with. Even if she met me singing in double bass, she wouldn't say, oh, two man, we are man. She never would say that. She was that generous. So the young people in the house no, that Mama Miriam is not gone. Her love and hope is alive amongst you. Unisa, we celebrate you. Thank you. The Tabon Begi School of Leadership, we celebrate you for honoring Mama Africa. We celebrate you. The love lives here. Yes. Love and hope lives here because Mama Miriam lived. How sensible, Miriam Makeba Malabuto Gabon. You say, Bonga, Mam, Tinam Sope, for coming uh, with those uh, memories and also sharing with us. Uh, when you speak about uh, that voice, 1964 voice at the UN, it was a small voice yeah. like this, uh, <laughs> written by others are saying there were African National Congress people who wrote that speech. But I want to emphasize that Memira Makeba was a, she was a pan-Africanist. Mm -hmm. The same like this week, uh, this uh, institution, we have been celebrating Babu Peku. We are celebrating Memira Makeba yeah. today. Yeah. So it shows even continuity. Yeah. Uh, Umam Tina said, hope, mm -hmm. courage, song. Mm -hmm. 
Those are the three key symbols or even values of Mamire Makeba. Uh, let me call Ntate uh, Tamakhani Maxwell Mujapilo. Music beyond memory. Ntate uh, Max, I saw him last time in the event that I read Dr. Selokalani at the Pula Festival. So he is also an artist. When an artist sings, he also comes with a voice. And the Tlaiutar is the voice of a radio. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Prof was talking about your voice. Maybe you will remember that if I say, Yo, yo, ya kauga cha pongo na ka ili gele le 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 <laughs> yes, most of my radio days, listeners will remember that. Sorry, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Professor Nkomo, the Vice Chancellor of UNISA, Professor Pulian Lenkabula in absentia, the Tabo Mbeki African School of Public and International Affairs, the Media Makeba Foundation, the Makeba family, the University of South Africa, my fellow panelists, Tobelo, Masia Riabu De, Nsegani, San Buonani. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. It's magic to my eyes, is music to my ears, to be standing here before you this afternoon to pay tribute to our national shiru. Yesterday, as the curtain was rolled down at the Cape Town International Jazz Festival, my mind also rolled back to the sterling final live performance of Mama Africa there in the year 2006, at the age of 75, still very active. On that stage of her grand finale tour, she belted out that enemy intimidating Zabalazo Chun, Hapo Zamani, Sizobuyatina, some of the 2006 grand finale tour highlights included the Avo session Basel in Switzerland, where she was backed by her dream team of African Kizo on piano, Nelson Lumumba Lee on synthesizer, Linda Lani Lee on conga drums, Alan Agbo on guitar, Brino Brown on saxophone, Raymond Mulongo Tumbe on bass, Tandai Sam Mataure on drums, <coughs> as well as the backing voices of Zenzel Lee, Shadi Faith Kekana, mm. the tall one, and Zamogu Tembuto. What a special and spectacular finale. It's still a frozen picture in my mind. It is indeed befitting and proper that uh, we start and celebrate this African month by praying, paying tribute to the Empress of African Song, Dr. Miriam Zenzile Makeba, as we also celebrate 30 years of our democracy to which she immensely contributed. As we celebrate 92 years of an African journey, which started at Prospect Township, way back 
in March 1932. We also revisit a groundbreaking speech 60 years back at the United Nations headquarters in New York City. In the histories of the nations of the world, there's been heroes and heroines who stood up to be counted as agents of change. Change for a better life, free of slavery, free of oppression, free of exploitation, and free of discrimination. These pioneers and leaders emerged from various sectors of society. Though most of them were in the political arena, arts and culture also played an important role in creating awareness about the atrocities. As that Mexican poet and academic Cesar Cruz once said, art should comfort the disturbed and disturb the comfortable. Yeah. Maybe I should repeat that. Yeah. Art should comfort the disturbed and disturb the comfortable. The music career of Dr. Miriam Zanzile Makeba is an epitome of the above quote. The former Skylark Stars partnership with Harry Belafonte in the 1960s made all the oppressed and dispossessed masses of our continent proud as she won that first Grammy Award for the 1965 album An Evening with Belafonte and Makeba arranged and uh, conducted by our own son of the soil, Dr. Mosa Jonas Gwangwa. Yay. Mm. She was the first African musician to win that coveted award in the best folk recording in 1966. The impact of that was an international paradigm shift about Africa. our continent, and the capacity of Africans to be players on the global stage. It also challenged gender stereotypes of the time. The album also promoted our culture and languages internationally as it carried African traditional songs in indigenous languages like Zulu, Oza, Sotho, as well as Kiswahili. Dorothy Masukas Kauleza, Velkom Durus Mbombela, Vuisle Minis Ndodem Nyama Ferut, as well as Malaika. Nakupenda Malaika. I love you, my angel, from Kenya. Yo. As a civil rights activist, she shook the world on Monday, the 9th of March, 1964, as she addressed the United Nations Special Committee on Apartheid, exposing the brutality and atrocities of the system. As the first to skip the country, she welcomed her fellow musicians to the United States and generously opened doors for many after that. In her tribute show hosted by Felicia Mabuza Sattle, she laid bare the frustrations of her early life in exile. She later became a citizen of the world and earned the name Mama Africa, a name she carried with pomp and pride. Like a Patriots in exile, her songs were banned from being played on the airwaves of her own country, South Africa. However, even the apartheid censorship machinery could not dampen her warrior spirit, and her countrymen and women were thirsty and longing for her music. After the unbending of liberation movements, we enjoyed her rich and vast music catalog, boasting his like Amampondo. Welela, Hapo Zamani, 
aluta continua pata pata houting and a promise and many others which bolstered our radio station music playlist as we joined President Tabombeke's African Renaissance agenda. A role model to many, many musicians worldwide, young musicians dedicated songs to her. Do you remember Bongo Muffin? Makewa. <laughs> Do you remember Bibim Somi's album? Makeba my latest. Currently, there is a French artist called Jane. She has a powerful hit called Makeba and many others. Oh, yeah. Dr. Makeba's Grammy Award feat inspired the younger generations of South African musicians like Ladies Smith Black Mambazo, Soweto Gospel Choir, Lebo Murake, Mbongeni Ngema, Nomkrebo Zikote, Wouter Kellerman, and Zeke Swantwini. Recently, we saw the youngest of us, Tyler Sissel, walk away with that Best African Performance Grammy Award in the era of Amapiano, <laughs> for that matter. Yes, never underestimate your impact on others. Because as Dr. Sears put it, to the world, you may be one person, but to one person, you may be the world. <laughs> Professionally a teacher, I repeat it. To the world, you may be one person, but to one person, you may be the world. After Mama Africa's trailblazing career, the world became an oyster to many of our local musicians like Sister Abigail Gubeka, Sister Maralo, Sister Mbim Charlie, Soul Brothers, Matlatin and Mautala Queens, Tandi Zomazwai, and many others. While Dr. Yvonne Shaka Shaka was aptly crowned Princess of Africa. Back home, the activist, superstar, philanthropist, and ambassador received the honorary doctorates from four of our major universities, including this one. A true soldier of the cross, she served until her last day on earth. <coughs> Historian, scol scholars, it may interest you to know that she skipped the country, South Africa, via Italy. But she left the world via Italy. Yeah. <laughs> Students of history, keep that in mind. The greatest legacy of Dr. Zenzile Miriam Makeba, according to me, is that it can be done. If I could, you can. May the name of Mama Miriam Makeba, may the name of Mama Africa live beyond memory. Makeba forever. Thank you. Rale Wohantate, Makeba Beyond Memory, Makeba Lives. Uh, I think Ntate took us through all the artists, all the musicians, all the groups. Uh, I think two years ago there was one from Uganda, so me the reimagination of Makeba also. That came from your Tandiswa, Prasipo, Duduzo Makatini. Uh, there are many that have done those renditions for Umam Mirem. Uh, others are saying there's also a picture of Umam Mirem with uh, Kenneth Kaunda. Uh, so there are many images. We are getting to our lecture now, as I called uh, David Lezualo, 
and ask my panel to go back to their seat. And we now have our guest lecture uh, presenter, May Yvonne Chaka Chaka, coming on the podium also. Uh, I'll ask David to come forward to do an exposition and introducing the, this lecture, the second annual memorial lecture of Dr. Zenzile Mire Makeba. Uh, David Lezual is part of the Tabumbeg School. How do overwhelmed people speak? So I want to thank you, uh, Mwafrika uh, Sipo, for the opportunity. And let me instantly um, salute our lecturer for this, the second annual lecture in memory of Mama Miram Makeba. That is Me Yvonne Chaka Chaka, the Princess of Africa. Members of the Council and Management of UNISA, the Executive Dean of the TM School, Professor Velinkom, the Makeba family, and the members of the Miriam Makeba Foundation, the members of the Diplomatic Corps, in particular, Mesato Dabe, from the Embassy of Guinea, And I want to also appreciate the contemporaries or friends of Miram Makewa, Bo Abigail Kubeka, Bo Mama Maralo, Bo Me Minam Tropi, and the one and only Tamarana Maxwell, Max the Mixer, Mojapil. And all the participants and everyone present here and elsewhere in the country the continent and the world. And all those who have joined us through the various alternative media platforms. For convenience, please, please allow me to also use that obscure, that obscure clause that says all protocol observed. Whatever it means. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, warm greetings to you all. Kiridumelang, my Africa. I want to start with a confession that all these people that spoke here today, this afternoon, have been select, uh, selected because of a particular bias. And one of those biases is that they are my most favorite people, each one of them. <laughs> so what a day and what a moment and what a place to be at. And I'm saying this because this is a special occasion on this Africa month when the African University celebrates and honors Mama Africa in this, the second annual Miram Makeba lecture said to be delivered by the Princess of Africa. I'm sure the celestial bodies, the metaphysical forces, our ancestors have seriously connived to ensure that the Princess of Africa does this today. Mama Africa is a special force that is with us. It is not a coincidence, therefore, that we have the Princess of Africa delivering the lecture in memory of Mama Africa. It is not a coincidence. It cannot be a coincidence. It is a divine connivance. I'm therefore mandated and simultaneously honored to introduce a masterpiece and a marvelous star our lecturer this afternoon, as the presenter of the second lecture held in memory and celebration of someone who was solid, steadfast, and deeply rooted in an unwavering pan-African 
way, a pan-Africanist hero and a genuinely well-intentioned activist and fighter for true liberation and social justice in this country, Azania, and the African continent as a whole. Miriam Makeba did not confuse herself and deliberately complicate simple realities as to what the struggle was about. She positioned herself as someone who refused to be assimilated in Eurocentric notions and cultures. In other words, she fought against colonization and to be defined by others, especially by the settler community, just as she powerfully asserted through her song, West Wind. Everything that has been said here today was not the lecture. The lecture is coming after this. <laughs> and I want to say everything that was said here, you'll be, if you want to check how relevant the lecture is, you'll see that the people that spoke before our lecturer today would have in advance repeated after her. The point I am about to make here is from a personal experience, ladies and gentlemen. It's not a hearsay, a hearsay or a mabarebari. I remember quite clearly in 2000 or thereabout, as a very young and uh, you know, committed law student, attending a show at the State Theatre where Mama Mira Makeba, Brayuma Sekela, Jonas Gwangwa and others were, pe were performing. And right in the middle of the performance, in a typical Brayu style, he put his trumpet aside, grabbed the microphone, and addressed the audience to make an impassioned plea to, and I quote, the powers that be, close quote, to properly honor Miriam Makeva for the immeasurable sacrifice and contribution she made to the country and the African continent in general. He said, ideally, she needed not to be working anymore at that time and be set for life. He, Brayu Maskela that is, proposed that if this government, this one, th this one, 30 years, <laughs> if this government, 30 years at that time, was listening and caring, it would make Miram Makeba a goodwill ambassador. So ladies and gentlemen, the president at the time, former President Tabombeki, seems to have listened to Brayu Masekel. And in 2001, I think, he assigned Miram Makeba the goodwill ambassador to Africa. That's a fact. But many people don't know that at the time, Pre Pre President Tabombeki assigned that ambassadorial role. It was Dr. Nkwasazana Dlamini Zuma who was the minister of what used to be called the Department of Foreign Affairs or the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, which means Mama Miriam Makeba served in Dr. Nkosazana Dlamini Zuma's ministry. I'm elated that she is the one who delivered the very first lecture last year, and she did it so exceptionally well. I must say that. So given this context, for me, this is like a beautifully crafted tapestry because this lecture is held by the African University in the Service of Humanity. The inaugural, the inaugural lecture was given by Dlamini Zuma and hosted by the Tawambek African School of Public and International Affairs. What's more, the lecturer this afternoon is someone who is not Miram Makeba. And she has never claimed that she is Miram Makeba. <laughs> and she cannot be Miram Makeba, even if she tried. As much as Miram Makeba would not have been this lecturer of today, no one can be Miram Makeba. However, this one, our lecturer this afternoon, is someone who embodies, reflects, and epitomizes the various elements, the key elements that signify Mama Miram Makeba. 
If you consider Mama Miriam Makeba as a musician, a songstress, and a performer, as a cultural ambassador, and someone who championed humanitarian causes in Africa, and someone who touched lives on the continent and got to be dearly embraced as Mama Africa. Well, these aspects do res resonate and reflect in the life of our lecturer this afternoon. Yvonne Chaka Chaka can briefly be described as a performing artist, an entrepreneur, a teacher, and a humanitarian. You see, humanitarian, like Mira Make. She was born Yvonne Ntombizodwa Machaka in Dobsonville. She, she whispered to me that uh, she's also Muloko, Wangamutoko. She studied speech and drama and later studied adult education and local government management, where else if not at UNISA. And she pursued a postgraduate diploma in business at another institution. I forgot it. <laughs> In December 2023, she obtained her honors in management practice and has now registered for the MBA with that very same institution. <laughs> I want to say, ladies and gentlemen, that she has three honorary degrees from, let me mention this, from UKZN, from Rhodes, and from TUT, yeah. and nothing in that line from UNIS. <laughs> <laughs> Since her introduction to the entertainment industry as a teenager in the early 1980s, she developed herself and her portfolio so much so that she diversified and expanded into a musician, a record producer, a talk radio, television shows, and also acting in several popular South African TV dramas. I won't mention them. <laughs> so as a performing artist, she shared the stage with statesmen and world-class artists and luminaries. I don't want to mention uh, Chaka Chaka that you also sent for Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> I didn't say that. You, you performed also alongside the Quincy Jones. You shared the stage with the likes of Oprah Winfrey, Bono, Abu Michael Jackson, the late, Abu Madiba, the late, and many others. Like Mama Africa, music has taken her, that is Yvonne Chaka Chaka, to different parts of the African continent and all over the world. In 1990, if you don't know this concept, in 1990, she received the name Princess of Africa after a successful tour in Uganda. Not in Europe, in Uganda. <laughs> During her many performances, one of her backing vocalists contracted malaria in Gabon. That was in 2004, and later, sadly so, she died. So this tragedy touched our lecturer today so deeply that she later became a goodwill ambassador for the United Nations Children's Fund, UNICEF, and the Rollback Malaria Partnership. In other words, the United Nations and the Rollback Malaria uh, be formed a partnership to fight this scourge. So she started the Princess of Africa Foundation in 2006 to champion the change in health and education for communities across Africa. She has since traveled the world advocating for social change, social justice, education, and economic empowerment for women and girls like Mama Miram Makeba did not build or initiate the Center for Boys. 
There's the Miriam Makeva Center for Girls. So you can see the resonance here that uh, we are exclu excluded, some of us, deliberately. Yvonne Chaka Chaka is the first African female recipient of the World Economic Forum Crystal Award. She has also been chosen as the 100th world class South African and was voted eighth, the eighth most powerful musician by the Forbes magazine, and voted among the world's 100 most influential women by Women Deliver. She served as the first ambassador for the Nelson Mandela Children's 44664 campaign, which raises global awareness of HIV AIDS and serves as the honorary colonel in the South African Air Force. I hope the, the lecturer will clarify whether you're celebrating this uh, 44664. Uh, and also what you're doing as an honorary colonel in the South African Air Force. <laughs> Ma Africa, I know very well that she conceptualized and launched the biannual Baking Vocalist and Session Musicians Award in 2014. And in March 2017, she received the Crens Montana Forum's gold medal in Morocco in recognition of her role in the United Nations for Africa on issues affecting women and children and her fight against diseases such as HIV, AIDS, TB, and malaria. With the 2017 BET, that is Black Entertainment Television, International Global Good Power Award, for her humanitarian work, just like Mama Makeva. At the height of COVID-19 pandemic in 2020, through the Princess of Africa Foundation, she expanded on her mission to empower women by starting the first online women-only radio station, women only. <laughs> and that radio station is called Woman Radio, which is a societal or social enterprise uh, giving women a platform to discuss all issues affecting them in our society. Ladies and gentlemen, I did not even give the exposition. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. And again, this is not even a quarter of what her bio or profile is. However, I'm sure that whatever I've just presented to you will help you have an idea of who our lecturer is this afternoon. And that, as I have said, she is not Miram Makeba, and she is even Chaka Chaka. She is not Mama Africa. She is Princess of Africa. Ma Africa, in this Africa month, Please, please, let's rise and welcome May Yvonne Chaka Chaka to the podium to deliver the second annual Miram Makeba lecture. Good afternoon. Bon... Bonsoir, bonjour. Bonsoir. Bonsoir, madame et monsieur. Je m'appelle Yvonne Chaka Chaka. Tu parles français ici, non? Oui? My name is Yvonne Chaka Chaka. Or you can call me Yvonne Ndomzodwa Minga. Indeed, I am not Miriam Makeba. I don't want to be Miriam Makeba because there's only one Miriam Makeba and there will always be one Mama Africa. Because you are a mother, you're a woman, people see you 
And I'm sure even sometimes, Mara, they call you Mama Africa when they see you. Hello, Mama Mara. Hello, Mama Africa. And I know uh, uh, two years ago or a year ago, I went to Durban. Somebody was turning a 6.0. And they were saying, hello, Mama, uh, to somebody. I know, with a big voice. That was then I'm sure. So if you are a woman, they will always call you Mama. I'm actually quite privileged and honored to be standing right before you this afternoon because we are celebrating history, 30 years of democracy in South Africa. Is there anything to celebrate? Maybe yes. Is there a lot that needs to be done? Maybe yes. Are we competing with the world when it comes to education and all of that? I'm waiting to hear from you. Yes. Maybe yes. Are we doing what our children has to be doing? Can our girl child walk in the street without anybody looking at her and thinking this is an object of desire? No. This is the only country where a 93-year-old gets raped. This is the only country where a two-year-old gets raped. But today, let's talk about the hopes that our Mama Africa wanted to give to us or aspired to see in this beautiful continent. I always tell people I have one passport and I am a proud South African, mm -hmm. even though I love this beautiful continent. This is not the dark continent that everybody believes it to be. This is the continent of milk and honey. This is the continent of every mineral, but do, do those minerals benefit everybody? It becomes like animal farm. Some are more equal than others. How do we correct the wrongs? It will take you and me sitting here, not to moan, not to point fingers, but to do what we have to be doing, just like what Mama Africa did for this continent. Yes. I'd like to say thank you to Professor Puleng uh, Lengambula in her abstention. Say thank you to Professor Ngomo. Is he still around, Prof? He puts his glasses here. <laughs> I'd also like to thank the Makeba Foundation I'd like to thank the representative, representative from the Guinea um, Embassy. I'd like to thank our esteemed uh, young man here, uh, Prof. Sipomantula Mkonyanawam. Nguli. Upi. Pamisi Santla Nguli. Sugum. Stella Leo Malionke. Prof. Mdanam Lom Tatting Half Price. Okay, good. And I'd like to also thank my fellow panelists, the people who knew Miriam Makeba, who loved her, who inspired her. Miriam was like Madiba. Mazi was like Madiba. When you were in her space, you thought you were the only one and she loved you and embraced you. She had many, many children that she loved, not only in this continent, but in the world. And she inspired all of us. I'd like the Makeba family to stand up. Lumumba, where are you? Where's Ayanda? Where's your dad? Lumumba. Okay, Lumumba is very quiet. He just went out. Okay. All right, Ayanda. Ayanda, just, I've never met your grandma, which is Bongi. This is Bongi's daughter, Miriam Makeba's only daughter. This is Bongi's granddaughter. I don't know where Zenzi is, but uh, thank you, Ayanda.
Thank you, David. Thank you, Madume. I was coerced into doing this three days ago. <laughs> I tried to run away from it to say, I've got an aunt who passed on, and I have to bury my aunt. I buried my aunt yesterday. But because I'm a servant, I had to do what I had to do. Thank you, Jabu, my little sister, and thank you, Rifilwe, for always supporting me. And thank you to my daughter, who looks after the Mary Makeba home. She actually takes her own money to make it happen. Please do stand up. She's in construction, and she's selfless, and she does this. And I want to say, I'll always be there for you, my child. This is not easy to talk about a larger than life person. Muzzy was larger than life, and we've heard from everybody that she was humble. I've never seen a humble person like this. Humble, I can't describe Muzzy, but she was the world star. What is the main goal of a lecture? Lectures are used to convey critical information, background, history, theories, and equations. Now I'll attempt to do just that. Many people right before me here, my counterparts, my colleagues, my sisters, did just that. Zenzila Miriam Makeba, born on the 4th of March, 1932, and unfortunately, others say the 9th, and others say the 10th, met her demise in November 2008. She was nicknamed Mama Africa. She was a songwriter. She was a musician. She was an actress, and she was a civil rights activist. Mazi loved this continent with her whole heart. A daughter of a Swazi mother and a Tosa father, she grew up in Sophia town. This was a segregated place where only black people were put. Just outside Johannesburg, our fathers and mothers were moved from such places, and there were some of them taken into townships. She began singing in a school choir at a very early age. She became a professional vocalist in 1954, performing primarily in Southern Africa. A daughter to a healer, as people said, a mother to a beautiful girl called Bongi, a grandmother to Zenzile Lee and Lumumba Lee, and a great, great mother to Ayanda and her siblings. Thank you, Maurice, for also pulling my hand to be part of this, working tirelessly to make sure that the Makeba Foundation functions. You know, foundations are very difficult to run. You need lots of money. I know somebody who takes her own money here. <laughs> That's exactly what she does. So each and every one of us do our bit. I can never be Tinam Shope. Tinam Shope cannot be Miriam Makeba. Mara Lo cannot be Hugh Masigela, if I may say, or Brenda Fassi. Because God knows our ways and God knows who we are, and we are all here for a reason. 
So when you wake up in the morning and you look at yourself in the mirror, say every frickle it's where it's supposed to be and I am here for a reason. So I know, Maurice, that you always dig deep to make sure that the foundation functions and it works. So those who can dig deep down their pockets, there are foundations that do well. And I will urge you and plead with you to support such. Like the Miriam Makeba Foundation, the Miriam Makeba School for Girls, the Klinam Shope Nozinwadi, they say if you want to hide something from a black child, put it in a book. And I want to disagree with you because there are people who work tirelessly to make sure that a young black child receives knowledge. People like the Namshope, they do that. And I'm sure many others who are not exposed or whom their stories are not told. So many of us do work, not because we want recognition, because sometimes it is a calling and we all do God's work. Others do it in different ways and others do it in other ways as well. So today we are standing here 30 years in democracy, acknowledging and commemorating the African queen, Mama Africa, Miriam Makeba. Are we as South Africans not proud that she was one of us, yeah. even though she was the woman of the world? Renowned superstar, but we as South Africans can stand tall and say she was one of us. Did we love her? Did we respect her? The world did. And if we didn't, how do we correct that? In the 1950s, she was with a group called the Manhattan Brothers. Later, she sang with all-female group called the Skylarks. Sis Abigail was part of the Skylarks. Now, these ladies did it when it was not fashionable, where they would sing. And when the police would come, they will run into the kitchen and go and wash dishes and pretend to be helpers. This is where we come from. Remember, there were no recreational places for our people, but they stood there and said, we are going to do it. And it wasn't easy. Today, our young people have got all the amenities and will live in this global space and they can expose themselves, which is really, really amazing. How did Miriam Makeba leave South Africa? Everybody has said it here. Who wants to leave their home place? No one. Everything and everybody who supports you are at home. But we see things happening in this continent when our young people want to cross the seas and some die in the oceans. How do we ask our leaders to make things happen for our young people? How do we stop the brain drain that we see every day? It happens not only in South Africa, but in this beautiful continent that is called Africa, where there are minerals galore, as I said, right from the beginning. The key of her international success was a small singing. She got a part on Come Back Africa. It was a film a dramatized documentary in a black life uh, directed covertly by Lionel Rogerson. We need to thank this man. I'm not even sure 
Was Lionel a South African, Mara? Yes. Was he? I think so. Okay. We're not sure. We're not sure. But this is the man who made it happen. Uh, Lionel Rogerson. If uh, Sis Abigail was here, maybe she would tell us. Dada um, Mujapi, who was Lina? I just know that she, he was behind uh, the film. Exactly. The Comeback Africa. So they say here, Makeba played herself on that film, singing two songs in a Shibin. Can you imagine that our people had to go and sing in the Shibins, you know, sing in some small Anyana places, but they made it big in the world. And that's why when you hear Hugh saying, Fishanama kukuku uchwala, Fishanama tini. That's how our parents brought us up. Matengi uchwala and brew imikomboti to make us live. And ama poisa maya figa nge kwele kwele yelo. Fane ama kokoko enzo njani afishwe. So these are all the songs that I would hear my father now. He would close the curtains, remember, Rafil, when all that music was, was played and we did not understand because this was the music that was burned. <coughs> songs like Kuleba Jawa, which was sang by Letambuli on a film called Roots. As a young artist, she was also inspired by Mary Makeba. And there were other superstars who inspired Mary Makeba, like Dolly Ratebe, yes. the very first film star. The most beautiful Dolly Ratebe. And the one who wrote the songs, the, wrote the music. You know what was nice with those ladies? They were differently talented and they did not compete, but they worked together to complete each other. Dorothy Masuga wrote the songs. Most of the songs that Mama Miriam Makeba sang were written by Dorothy Masuga. Hapo Zamani. Um, uh, even Pata Pata, the very first one was sung by Dorothy Masuga. Nonsoko Lokoli. Ni ayas leongo? Ah, ma 2000. Lawa. You know, inko ma ya gorilla. And they didn't say, I we na jay kom fan Zimbabwe, fan Rhodesia. Yeah, but they worked together and they complemented each other. They loved one another. But Sister Tandi, when Sophia Town was brought down, she sang that Sophia Town song. Songs where, when the guys, the police were coming, and they said, on Stakni, on Spola Ye, Middlelands, Middlelands. And so they knew how to express themselves. And today, we don't even look at them as our heroes. So we do forget as South Africans, don't we? But we were inspired by such people in different places and in our different spheres. We were inspired by the Dolly Ratebes of this world, by the Sofim Grinas of this world, yes, yes. Huh? by the Dolly Ratebes, the Abigail Gubegas, Yomara Lowe's, Tandy Klassen, we got inspired. And I'm very, very happy. I'm not sure if it was Mara or it was Sis Abigail who, who spoke about Sis Queen Ndaba. Yes. Queen Ndaba ran an organization called Doke House yeah. where all these artists would come and rehearse from there Doke House is no more today. 
I used to rehearse at Doke House. I used to give Mandaba money to make sure that things were happening. I used to pay for my rehearsal. Because sometimes we want things for nothing as well. And we don't contribute. And today, Doke House is no more. And we are quick to forget people like Abu Mam, Queen of Ndaba, who were, she was even making clothes. She was a seamstress, Umam, 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 um, uh, Queen of Ndaba. She would make these ladies look good on stage. And these are the women we should not forget. We should be talking about. We should up uplift their names lest we forget. But we, as South Africans, we just say, hi, I've arrived. And you forget about those who paved the way for us. But today, we are here talking about Mama Miriam Makeba, the one and only Mama Africa who inspired all of us. All of us were inspired by her. And she was also inspired by others. Miriam Akeba was then invited by this very same guy. We need to give him heads up, this liner. Uh, you young people, you have to quickly Google and check quickly where Lionel came from. Before I leave, I want you to do that. That's a task. OK? So you see, they say she was, he was American. He was not South African, Mara. I thought he was Italian. They say he was American. I don't know. Google say different things. Uh, Lionel Rogerson. Either, OK, whatever. But we'll find him. <laughs> So it says here, when the film finished, Rogerson then invited Mama Miriam Makeba in 1959 to the Venice Film Festival, where she became an instant celebrity. She was flown via London to New York, where she appeared on the television and played at, a, at, the, at the Village Vanguard Jazz uh, Club. Thank you to this guy. I'm sure he's no more, but wherever he is, we want to thank him. Now Miriam appears at this film festival and she becomes a star instantly. Now he's in, she's in New York. Then she meets a very handsome young man called Harry Belafonte. Harry Belafonte took her under his wing and guided her through her very first solo album. Remember, she'd been working with the Scar Likes. They did record Pata Pata. She was with the Manhattan Brothers. And unfortunately, the last Manhattan brother died two years ago, Ndade Ah, shame I know my history, Basop. Yeah. <laughs> hmm? no, <it's> huh? <laughs> Ah, Sansa. Eh, hey, Brasanza is still alive. Yeah, at 96. Uh, Brasanza is still alive. Oh, yes. Yes. Uh, in fact, we could have, we should have invited Brasanza. But he still is alive. Thank you, Mara. He was a David David Serrame was the one I was talking about. Yes. So Brasanza is still alive. We have to go and look for him because these are the guys who are South Africans and they made it big and they went overseas to tell the world about the atrocities that were happening in South Africa and how did they do it in the form of arts. Do we respect our people in the arts? Not at all. Do we respect ourselves? We should be as well. We need to take our art very seriously as well. Now, we can't always be blaming government to say government should be doing this. 
we should be doing things for ourselves as well. Support one another. We've seen the likes of Capasso here. Is, are the Capasso people still here? I think the Capasso, oh, Capasso, they are there. Capasso, Sambro, and Sampra. These organizations, they make sure that they collect the royalties. They are called CMOs. They collect the royalties. Just like you guys, you work for different organizations, and again, they take pay as UN and UIF. We as artists are like vagrants. Nobody does that for us. But Sambro and Sambra, I'm going to put Capasso on a spotlight, you don't have any of those guys. You need to start doing that. But these organizations, they collect the money and there's something called a retirement annuity for artists as well. Yes. And we need to commend them for that. So we would like even artists, that, for artists to do it themselves as well. Because once you choose a career, you have to look after yourself, guys. We can't constantly be, be blaming government. Only thing that government has to do is to level the playing field for us to be able to work, to be able to make sure that our art is exported. If those things are difficult, that becomes a big deal. And people like Mama Miriam, they did a lot. We didn't expect much from the government, but she did a lot to expose the atrocities that were happening in this country. And for that, I think we need to say, because she also got bruised. She also went into exile when she didn't want to. She didn't intend being in exile. She didn't even think she will be in exile for 30 solid years. Now, when Harry Belafonte made sure that she records, I remember when I met Mazi for the first time, she used to say, La ma American bata wang wut me nangzo to lang it me nang it ha lendela nes milesa no ma bangati zo to laganja and that's how she was. So she did her famous click song which everybody sings. And Pata Pata is sung by everybody as well. Shortly after Shabville uh, massacre in 1960, Miriam Akeba heard her mother had died. But the South, her South African passport was revoked and she was prevented from returning home for the funeral of her mother, and that was the beginning of the 30 years of her suffering. Can you imagine not being able to come back to the country to come and, and bury your mother? That killed her slowly but surely. Now she's in exile. She doesn't have to come back.